Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, August 10th, 2020, COVID update, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Optimal Health Associates. First, a big shout to my staff who seems to enjoy these, but also gets tortured by them because of all the phone calls. So just as a reminder to people, uh, if you have a question about this, either send it via YouTube or uh, Facebook, or go to our webpage and fill out a patient There's a contact, co contact form. form. Don't call the office with questions about what I'm talking about because that isn't why the staff is there. They're scheduling patients and taking care of acute patient problems and it just throws a big wrench in the works when we get a big deluge of phone calls. Um, likewise, a big thank you to the staff all the time for all your support, uh, everything you do for the patients, all the PAs, the MAs, the front office, the back office, the lab people, the director, uh, and the manager. Uh, and all the new people. Um, sorry about the phones for those of you who are in the practice. We've had some changeover with people leaving. We have, uh, I think, two or three new phone people starting the next few days to week and several other additional staff. It's a big operation and so when staff leave, we can't always get the right people in right away, but we, I think we have that in process, so thank you for your patience. So COVID update today, uh, another lower amount of cases again. Um, in Oklahoma, so the curve is coming down a little bit. I'm optimistic about that. We'll have to see how the next few days go and see what happens. Uh, so only two or three deaths yesterday, so I think we're at 605. So pretty good, about 570 cases were in the hospital Friday. I saw the numbers, I'm not sure how many are in today. Uh, but the numbers have come down a little bit, 800, 450, 450. So if we can stay on that trend, that would be marvelous. That means people are um, wearing the masks. It's been hotter the, at times. The heat can kill the virus outside. So we can be positive about that. Um, but let's talk about responsibility and irresponsibility. And I think one of the things that's going to cause failure in all our plans and the failure for schools to successfully open or stay open is going to be Parents, yes, parents, and if you're a parent, I could be looking at you. Because the problem we're seeing is parents are not reliable. That was one of the things we factored into some of our planning um, at the schools I helped, uh, but it's really becoming clear that parents in an effort to just shuffle Johnny or Sally off to school may not be honest in terms of were, was there a family exposure? Did everyone do the 14-day quarantine? Has the person done it long enough? Um, and the answers that we're hearing in, on a community basis from different physicians and schools is there's a lot of flexibility with the truth, which is also known as lying. So you need to keep your kids home if they're in that 14-day quarantine period and not let them go to school. If you're sending them before that, you're going to facilitate infections in others. And just because you need little Johnny or Sally to go doesn't mean Johnny or Sally gets to go. You need to do what's right for the community. And if you can't see that because you're narcissistic, you're probably not watching me anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. But that's the problem. And so if we fail at, at the school openings, uh, I'm pretty firmly convinced at this point it's because our society has too many people who are only out for themselves and if and if there's only people out for themselves then it fails now i could tell you some really great stories about people doing things at some schools with donating masks and a big shout out to everyone who's doing what they can for mass donation to people and that and there's tons of great stories and it's and there really is a tremendous spirit of humanity here in the united states and across the world and in oklahoma but these these people who won't participate and subtract are, is really a problem right now so we have to think about that ou had several rallies today both from the staff and the teachers about not opening i did not hear what the final uh, decision or if there's been one made but again if people abide by the restraints, we wear masks, we're responsible, it's worthy of a shot of trying to open uh, ultimately. And if we start having cases, we close. I, th I think that's what you have to go with. But I think there is still the opportunity to open. So that's what we need to really f focus upon. Let's talk about uh, the drug that shall not be named, hydroxychloroquine. 
So a few things on that. There, there's just a massive amount of negativity from all the mainstream, most mainstream umbrella organizations on plaquenil use for prevention or prophylaxis of COVID-19. The Minnesota study that showed that there was no, sorry, no benefit um, for prophylaxis, interestingly enough, when I could finally get a hold of the methods, um, they didn't test the people who they said had COVID, all of them. So the way the study worked was it, it was a prophylactic trial, prophylaxis meaning let's give it to people who may have, who were exposed. But it turns out a lot of the people who were exposed, the index case of exposure was not a confirmed COVID case. They may have had symptoms of COVID, but they weren't confirmed because there wasn't enough tests going around. So that study too sort of seems a little methodologically flawed to be considered definitive on prophylaxis when you didn't have a confirmed case in the indexed index person who was the source for the exposure to the people and and then the authors have not gone back and then did antibody testing um, to see if they picked the right people or not and so again the authors didn't follow through and so once again it's a problem for me intellectually to say oh this study shows it's not it doesn't work for prophylaxis and I'm not just picking and choosing I'm just it's an obvious method methodological flaw uh, when you're talking about prophylaxis just like with the Brazil study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine the control arm getting uh, Plaquenil before they entered the study is a problem because they're not a control arm so th that's the constant thing but the bottom line is this it is incredibly getting incredibly difficult for anyone to prescribe Plaquenil. So in our practice, we're taking a little pause right now because I actually have to get a consent form done and go through some steps over the next few days in order to meet, I think, the medical legal requirements to be able to prescribe it. I'm sorry we have to do that, but we have to do that. That's a process and it takes a few days um, because we really are going to have to formalize this since the both the FDA, the American College of Surgeons or Physicians and Surgeons and a myriad of other groups have not um, been supportive of COVID, they've come out and said, no, you shouldn't use it. And I think that data and what they're basing it on, I disagree with, and I still have the right as a physician to disagree and make my own choices. But by the same token, I have to go through a process to make sure that uh, my thinking is correct. Because as General Patton said, if we're all thinking the same, no one's thinking. Likewise, if everyone's thinking one way, except for you, maybe you're wrong. So again, we have to go through a little bit of a process on some of that. I read an interesting article on zinc today from um, a physician, I think at the University of Colorado, once again, emphasizing how well it works for all viral illnesses. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I think that's the summary tonight. Um, nothing real long, just do the right thing. If you get exposed, stay at home. If you have the illness, complete your 10 days um, from onset of symptoms and 24 hours without a fever before you leave. Um, so anyway, go to the CDC guidelines, follow them. Good night.